welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. In our show this time, we'll review the most recent top five Think Tech talk shows and staff pick. We'll check out the elements of the best of the best and get a handle on the public issues and guests involved. Think Tech produces more than 35 talk shows every week in our downtown high-tech green screen studio. Our Think Tech talk show offerings are very diverse, and their coverage is also very diverse, covering things you might never have otherwise known. Every week, Think Tech chooses its top five Think Tech talk shows from the week before based on the number of views each of them has had on the internet. For this past week, the winning shows were as follows. Number one, from the series Beyond the Lines, hosted by Rusty Kamori. It was called Hokua General Manager Dwayne Komine, Beyond Condos. We talked with Dwayne about his receipt of the National Award for Best Condo General Manager in the United States and why he is a successful leader. Dwayne shared valuable insights about leadership, creating a culture of excellence, and dealing with the biggest adversity of his life. I kind of like the business, so I, I applied. My brother got me to apply at uh, the Ikoi Tower. Okay. From there, I worked on a hands-on resident manager, meaning that I worked in the yard, I worked with the employees, and then from that point, I really liked what I was doing and playing music. I decided to enhance my education, so from that point, I went to Rural Capital Plaza, yep. which was the first condominium in the Kakako District and under the HCDA ruling. So from Royal Capital Plaza, I was asked to go to Nauru Tower, which was run by Nauru Phosphates Royalties Development. And from that point, I was recruited by Kobayashi McNaughton Group to open up the school. Wow. You, you've really went through a lot of places. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's so amazing how you started as a janitor being... And then now you're the general manager of the, one of the most prestigious buildings in Hawaii. And you're part of the Institute of Real Estate Management. Correct. And that's a great organization. I remember a few months ago, I was a uh, guest speaker for them. Tell me about that, that organization. Oh, well, organized. it's an organization where education and just, just getting facts and learning about your career. I... I started about 30 years ago, and the class or the organization had about 15 students. Yeah. And I became president, and when I left a couple years later, I left with about 300 membership. Wow. But it increased, you know, for the certification that's known nationally. And what is ARM, A-R-M? Accredited Residential Manager. Again, it's, a, it's nationally recognized. And most people in, in the industry prefer an arm that they would like to hire or interview. Yeah. And, Wayne, let's talk about Hokua again now. Um, when you became general manager, I mean, obviously, they, they had McNaughton and Kobayashi. They wanted that vision of being at the top of the, the highest standard of luxury living. Tell me about that situation in the beginning. Well, the, when I got hired by the Kobayashi McNaughton team, it was very trying. I had to put condo living and resort style living together. And I knew a lot about condominiums, but not so much in the resort style. Number two from the series Lillian's Vegan World, hosted by Lillian Kumick. It was called Just Like Cheese. Look out, dairy, vegan cheese is a happening thing. With guest Ryuko Miura, the discussion was about Ryuko's vegan journey, how, why, and the benefits since going plant-based for her, and about vegan cheeses and tasting. So this is at um, Down to Earth, they mm -hmm. carry a... A large that range. spiciness is yes, the same. That, that has some um, spicy peppers in it, so mm -hmm. a little bit of bite, which, which is nice. Kind yes. of, you know, stimulates the palate a right. little bit. And let's have a look at the next one, which is the, yes, dire medium cheddar. Also dairy-free, all of these, dairy-free, soy-free, non-GMO, non... It's it just so, so wonderful that these products are out there. This one is the same one ounce, about 28... Uh, mm -hmm. grams. This, this is also a great one for sandwiches, Hugo. Mm -hmm. I know that you like your sandwiches too, yes. so you might enjoy this one. Have a try. Yeah, this one. 
this goes great you know with crackers and stuff great for parties because mm-hmm. who doesn't like cheese and crackers mm-hmm. you know olives <laughs> pickled onions mm-hmm. you can also add some of the vegan uh, meat like mm-hmm. some ham slices oh, what did you think I of that agree. one it's delicious how would you eat that uh, i would eat it with crackers yes yes, yes. they're really good with yes. crackers so mm-hmm. nice little cheese platter going on here mm-hmm. would you be satisfied if you had that of like course. a picnic or a... I would be more than satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So, you know, all these cheeses are available in Honolulu too. Mm-hmm. Let's have a look at one more, which is the last one, and that mm-hmm. is the Monterey Jack style. Mm-hmm. This one has a lot of bite to it. It's, a, it's almost like a mix between the Parmesan and mm-hmm. the cheddar, I found. Um, this I prefer. I love it on its own, like to eat it just as it is, but it's, it actually works great melted too. Mm-hmm. Melted toasted sandwiches wow. or, you know, Thank incorporated you. into some uh, baked mm-hmm. dishes. Mm-hmm. So this is, a, this is also available at Down to Earth mm-hmm. uh, for $5.99. You wow. can get all of these on sale sometimes. So That's right. do look out when they're on sale. You know, it's a great time to do some That's tasting. Right. And on that note, have a taste. Actually, this one was the parmesan. I think I made a mistake. Okay. Yeah. The parmesan. Mm. Is that the one that you tried? This is the parmesan. Yes. So this is the jack. Mm -hmm. Number three from the series The Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection, hosted by Gwen Harris. It was called Zanuck Kapala Lindsay, The Music Man. In this episode, we discuss Zanuck's career in music and his upcoming projects and events. During the show, Zanuck played in the studio. He plays guitar and ukulele and other instruments. I'm ready Now that you're in my life I can put away my fears about tomorrow I know your love is true so I give my heart to you oh I'm ready I'm ready no matter where the road might lead as long as I can feel you here beside me so let the heavens fall I won't care at all because I'm ready I'm ready to let my soul break through after all the years, I'm not afraid to start again with you. Sometimes I may stumble along the way, but I can finally say goodbye to yesterday. If you're ready, won't you take my hand? And promise that we'll always be together Please whisper now As we take this vow I'm ready Please whisper now As we take our vow I'm ready. That was beautiful. Thanks. That was beautiful. I'm so here.
Number four, from the series Think Tech Tech Talks, hosted by Jay Fidel. It was called Vex Robotics in Hawaii. Robotics are alive and well in Hawaii, with guests Art Kimura and Reen Kimura. They are the organizers of Vex Robotics in Hawaii and spoke about robotics for students in Hawaii, including students in elementary, middle, and high school. After all, we need to encourage our students to study robotics. Why Challenger? It's because it gave me a relationship with NASA. Following that, in, uh, if you can bring up the next slide, um, the beginnings of first robotics and then VEX robotics in Hawaii. Actually, let me, let me talk a little bit about this. In October, I was involved in a PBS special, The Future of Work. And primarily, it looked at how machines, artificial intelligence, robotics is affecting the jobs and the workplace and how it's replacing a number of jobs. That was when they had the 40 people in the big room. That is correct. That's right. And Leslie Wilcox runs around and that's everybody gets a chance. Exactly. Right. Yeah, well, that's a good program. No, yes. And I remember that, the future that. of work. Exactly. That's exactly. not an easy question either. No, it was a difficult time because the hotel workers are on strike. And I think oh, yeah. hotel workers realize yeah. that a lot of their jobs would be replaced. This all goes through diversification, the key word. Absolutely. And in the second part of our show, we're going to talk about that right. in some detail. Okay, keep going. Wait, next slide. <laughs> Sorry. This is when you're supposed to kick him and go, make him go to the next slide. He's not responding. <laughs> so, as educators, this is our question. How do we train students for jobs in a future that has not been created? It's really difficult for us as educators and parents to think about what jobs will be like 15, 20 years from now mm. when our children will be out there. I mean, in Hawaii. In Hawaii. Our workforce Excellent. in Hawaii, we're talking about right here. Specifically. Yeah, Specifically. Yeah. Our beginnings is 1999, uh, by a chance meeting in Hilo. Uh, I met a NASA engineer, Mark Leal, who had been in Hilo to represent NASA in the building of the future Emilo Astronomy Center. He offered us two scholarships in the first robotics program, which eventually went to McKinley High School and Wailua High School, two of the most famous programs in Hawaii and national. And for, that was our beginning. And along the way, we brought in VEX about 15 years ago as a training program for her, a fall program that children could learn in the fall, and then first would happen in the spring. Eventually, the two first and VEX had a divorce nationally, and because that of that... That was Cayman. Okay. <laughs> well, they it's a, a great story. Yeah, it's a great I idea. mean, they split, and so VEX became its own entity, and first continued on. Okay. So VEX in Hawaii has grown enormously. There's four different programs right now. One for elementary children called VEX IQ, from grades four to eight. There's a program called VEX VRC, or some people call EDR. Number five, from the series Quok Talk, The Culture of Women, hosted by Crystal Quok. It was called LGBT Discrimination in Asia, How This Impacts Asian American LGBT Communities in the U.S., with guest Justice Sabrina Shizue McKenna of the Hawaii State Supreme Court. Justice McKenna shared her experiences and reflected on her recent talks in India, Japan, and Hong Kong on issues of gender and LGBT issues, bridging Asia and Asian American understandings on how socially sensitive issues, like gender, affect us all, gives us a deeper understanding of LGBT communities in Asia and the need for more conversations on gender issues worldwide. I think all women, I think all women, have experienced some level of sexual discrimination yeah. or sexual harassment. Right. And so we can, we start from the perspective, we understand discrimination. And I think, you know, as a feminist, and I think feminists in general, it's not just about promoting women, it's about creating equal rights for all. Mm. And so I think having women within the judiciary really, really does change perspectives. I think that you know, it was after 1972 and Patsy Mink's Title mm. IX law where, where the significant increase in women in the judiciary, women lawyers, women in law schools, then women in the judiciary. I think attitudes toward domestic violence laws changed, sexual assault laws changed in the United States, and that's something that I'm saying in right. India. I was actually invited by a law school, ah. Gender Global Law School, um, which with which uh, UH does have a sister relationship. Okay. And we actually accept... Uh, some are volunteers from externs oh, nice. from that uh, law school in the summer because it's it's a you know India is an English common law system right their education at that level is all in English so they can actually they don't have a language barrier right right yeah. there's no excuse for that but at the same time it's a very deeply rooted kind of 
traditional male exactly. dominated culture. Oh, yeah, exactly. And there's so few women. And it was interesting because I was interviewed by the news um, agency representative, a wonderful person, very, I think, very open minded and enlightened person. Um, but he was, you know, saying, we now have three women out of 31 <laughs> in the Supreme Court. And I, and we only had one last year, and I was like, that's tokenism. You yeah. know, three out of 31 is tokenism. And it's real. there's very few women in the high courts, which is like the state Supreme Courts. Right. Very few women. And I said, you know, really, you need to have a system. So, And how did they react to that? Like, um, were they uh, well, respectful of that? Well, I think I was talking to the men, and I was right. talking to some of the male Supreme Court justices. And they said, I think the ones that I'm talking to are the enlightened ones. Okay, so, that's true. Um, so yes. it depends on your kind of exactly. You spoke to the really yeah. um, chauvinistic ones. Oh, yeah. that'd be interesting. I'm not sure how, how that would cut. But yeah, yeah I, I, have, I have hope for change. You know, I'm very hopeful for change. And I went to several law schools, and there were many women law students, and they're so bright and so driven. And you know, I just have great hope for the future of India. And of course, Japan, my home country, I've gone, I spoke at the Gender and Law Society for the first time a couple years ago. They dedicated a conference to sexuality, gender, um, sexual orientation and gender identity issues. Oh, and that time, you know, I, I was open about my own sexuality. And it was amazing because after I spoke, several people, several of the professors got up and they came out. Oh, wow. And the people around me are like, oh, my God. See, it takes somebody like yeah. you to open up, and then people kind of trickle Pe in and Right, people share. start opening up, yeah. you know. And here's our staff pick from the series Community Matters, hosted by Marcia Joyner. It was called Sister Cities with Havana. Honolulu, like Havana, is an island city with guest Jesus Puerto. The U.S. Sister City program began in 1956 when President Dwight Eisenhower proposed a people-to-people -people citizen diplomacy initiative. This initiative links jurisdictions in the U.S. with communities worldwide. Now, more than 2,000 cities, states, and counties are partnered in over 140 countries around the world. In the show, we discovered a deeper understanding of the complexities and wonders of Cuba. Its history as a leader in the field of universal education, its world-recognized literacy, its vibrant preventative health care system, and current trends in its tourism industry. U.S. policy uh, towards Cuba, um, but the, the uh, President Trump has continued to, um, even though there's been a reversal of many of the uh, forward-moving, forward-moving uh, uh, shifts that President Obama had made, uh, there's still um, plenty of those, uh, those those changes intact. And um, and I think uh, Trump made an announcement in seven, 2017 that, um, uh, that uh, there's still interest to uh, support uh, Americans who are interested in engaging uh, and seeking opportunities to do business in Cuba. So that, you know, that's still promising and our, you know, our uh, commercial airlines uh, are still flying there. The planes are going over full. Uh, so Delta has flight, uh, United, uh, JetBlue, Southwest, American Air Airlines as well. Um, you know, there's a the problem, the, you know, the part of the problem, is, you know, as the United States is repairing its relationship with Cuba, a wide variety of cultural, social, and economic systems in Cuba are likely to transform in a short time. So Americans well established uh, with, with, with relationships and knowledge of Cuban culture, uh, government officials, small business entrepreneurs, health care systems, uh, and hospitality industry are needed to forge partnerships um, between Americans and Cubans. Well, and, I you think... Know, that is where the opportunity is for us uh, with this. in Hawaii to connect with through the Sister City program. You can always find the links to these shows in our daily email advisories. If you don't already get our daily email advisories, you can sign up to get them on thinktechhawaii.com. These are only samplings from the top five and staff pick from across our 35 weekly talk shows. There are, of course, many more. To see these top five and staff pick shows in their entirety, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. Great diversity, great community, great content at ThinkTech. If you have questions or comments about these or any of our shows, 
please let us know. And yes, it's okay to share them with your friends and colleagues. Thanks so much for watching our shows and for supporting our efforts at ThinkTech. Aloha, my name is Jay Fidel, and I'm the CEO of ThinkTech Hawaii. ThinkTech is a study in citizen journalism. The value of citizen journalism is that all the people involved become more actively engaged in a more thoughtful examination of the world around them. By this interaction, we can build a more dynamic, productive community dialogue. We can become more curious, more aware, and better informed and educated. We can separate the wheat from the chaff and raise the clarity of our collective thinking. And Lord knows we need that clarity in these difficult, divisive, and most interesting times. Now more than ever, watch us, follow us, and like us. We're ThinkTech at thinktechhawaii.com. And now, let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show, or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on ThinkTechHawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to ThinkTechHawaii.com slash audio. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, Call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together.
We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Cynthia, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Cynthia does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii, and of course the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important Think Tech episode. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.